Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 2 in my satisfactory let's play for update 6 and beyond. Now in the last episode, for a quick refresh, we had just gotten the first milestone unlocked, which was base building, allowing us to get the literal foundations of factories and then walls and things like the lookout tower which I'm on now. And with that, we started building our first power facility. So we've got six biomass burners in there, all hooked up to the power network. And then we've got two, a sort of a semi-automated kind of conversion process for vegetation that then gets turned into biomass. And then we can just pick it up in the second box and distribute it to our burners just to make sure they're all online. Now, obviously in the future, the plan would be to have coal power, oil, and things like that so we can get a nuclear, I guess. So that power is just automated. We never have to kind of come by and drop things in manually. But for the time being, it's going to have to be done this way. But to make things a little bit easier, in between episodes, I just did a quick run around the immediate vicinity, grabbing all the foliage I could find and dumped it all in there. So that should just keep us going for a while. I shouldn't have to run back and forth to turn on and off power too much, hopefully in the future and hopefully for a little while. Uh, so the only other thing is I disconnected the power from the hub itself and now this area is just the entire power facility for our entire operation as it were. Now in that time that's passed we've now saved up enough to progress the next milestone. So the milestone that we're on currently is in the top right it says logistics. We need 150 metal plates, 150 rods and 300 wire. So all of that stuff was set up in the previous episode but we just needed time to pass to actually make the goods. So let's just hand them in now. All right, there we go. Milestone reached. Can now merge, split, and lift to increase the complexity and efficiency of your factory. We encourage you to consider more verticality when it comes to factory logistics to streamline short-range transportation. The productivity display will help you measure and improve the productivity of individual buildings to aid with optimization. Oh yeah, the productivity display. Now I gotta be honest, I'm not sure where that is or what that is. Productivity display. I'll just have a quick look at it again, because I've never used that. And people have often asked me, coming from like Anno 1800, they're like, how do you see the production and what you're making and how many tons per minute or whatever, you know? And I, I, the answer to that is, I have no idea. I don't know where you see that. But it says productivity. With this upgrade, you can see the efficiency of each building. Oh, wasn't that there already, though? We looked at it in the last episode. It's just this, isn't it? This little productivity? I don't know, if I'm mistaken, you let me know, and we'll find that out in future. Um, but anyways, so just really quickly, just to kind of show you what we've just gotten, what, what we've just gotten, we have the elevator for the conveyor lift, so that'll take 60 resources per minute, the same as our Mark 1 here. And then we've also got the merger and the splitter. So the splitter, as pretty straightforward as it is, if we put that on a belt that's here already, for instance, like this one, I don't know if it's actually going to work that way. I think we have to get rid of the belt. Sometimes you can. I think when you're on foundations, you can. But if we just build a splitter just right here, just to show how it works, obviously it's pretty self-explanatory, but just in case, we'll just get another smelter right alongside here. So we've got a second smelter. We have one iron ore miner, right? And we know that this miner makes 60 ore per minute. And we know that the smelter takes in 30. So simple math would deduce that we can have two smelters. So we needed a splitter in order to split the belt. So this can go in there, this can then go right into that one, and this can go right into that one. And there we go, we are splitting evenly the ore into these two different smelters, and they can both just smelt iron, and they could link back up if they wanted to, or whatever, and that's what the merger is for. So just to keep it, the examples flowing, we'll get rid of that in a moment, don't worry about that. Um, let's just let that flow into there, let's just build another thing for now. This is just an example, because we're going to get rid of all this anyway. Is that it? I think that's it. So this smelter is now online. The iron is flowing. And it's going to flow into here, which is making iron plates. So what we could do is just get rid of this. And add down a new merger. So opposite of the splitter, this takes things in and then throws it out in one direction. So you can see the orange lines. It's a bit weird, because if you're looking through it, the orange turns green anyway. But basically it has three inputs and one output. That's the way it is. So we'll just line up the inputs like this. Send an input from there, send an input from there, and the output into the box. And you can have different goods go through here, it doesn't really matter, it's totally fine. So if we switch this now to rods instead of plates, we now have from the one mining drill, you know, more efficiently, 
two smelters and two buildings coming out of that. But what we're going to make in this Let's Play, in this episode today, the plan is to make a facility dedicated to making, uh, to smelting iron, really. So, what have we got? We've got pure ore here, and I think we've got pure ore here, and that means basically six smelters, right? Because if this one does needs two, the other two must need four. So yeah, so let's just clear this area, and then we can get building. Our thing is back. Uh, we can actually toggle on the next milestone, just to always have it there to see what we need to work towards, of course. And the next milestone is the field research. So it's going to give us a map, the ability to make the MOM, the molecular analysis, uh, analysis, sorry, analysis, analysis machine. It's used to analyze new and exotic materials that we find. Object scanner, personal box, beacons, which are actually apparently going to get removed. It says this item will likely be removed in a future update because they added this map, which basically makes these obsolete. Uh, but anyway, let's do that. So that's going to require just wire, screws, and plates. So really easy. We can do that. In fact, the wire and the plates is basically done, but everything else we'll do in between. All right, let's get cracking. This is where the game really, for me at least, gets very fun and opens up and where we get to just design factories almost from scratch. Um, so we'll let things just kind of keep working. We need to break that. We've broken that one and we need to build three miners. So let's have a look. We need two more miners. So the great thing with this screen is we just go to production. We go and need two more of these. We have what we need for it, but we need two portable miners. So to get a portable miner, we'll have to go to here, let's type portable miner, and then we'll say add to to-do list, add two of them. And it looks like we can... Is the recipe there? Sorry, did I just make a mistake? Let me see. It might actually be there. Yeah, because it uses the same stuff. So it's actually already added it to everything we need. So that's two portable miners, done. And uh, we just have to go and actually make that in a specific building, the equipment hub. Don't know if we actually built one yet, did we? I guess not. All right, so we need an equipment hub. Here we go. And we'll just build it somewhere here. We can just move it later. And this will make us different weapons and things like that in future. But right now, all we need it for is the portable miner. We'll just make two of these. All right, so that's done. And then with those two portable miners, we can now just set up um, the actual miners on the ore. And then we need to make six smelters, but put them on a grid and, you know, make them look nice. Did I just go by? There it is. So just smash this. And that should take care of our iron needs for quite a while, but the facility can get pretty complicated after the smelter, because then we're going to feed it into a place and mess with it quite a bit. And we don't want to run before we can walk, because you can end up tripping, <laughs> um, uh, essentially. So you don't want to go too far, like plan too far ahead because um, basically the chains just won't line up and the way you're trying to do things, if you don't have a belt that can even carry this stuff fast enough, you know, it doesn't make sense. So we can't just build for the future like too far in advance. Uh, I'm just going to get up on top of the thing again. We'll just have a look if they're kind of straight. They should be even with each other. We'll just make sure. I don't want to destroy everything just yet. Yeah, that looks good to me. I like the angle that they're at. So we'll change that one. And I hope that's good for the future. So that's those two done. We're going to need four more smelters. So let's see. One, two, three, four. So we just need rods for that. We're making rods right now. They're feeding into this box. Uh, and once we do that, then we just need a bunch of foundations. So let's just queue up. I don't know how many we'd need. Probably about 20. So that's how many iron plates we need. So it's kind of hard to see. It's on the right of my screen now. So we need 15 more rods. And about 24 more plates, and that will give us everything we need. We'll get rid of all this, move it all out of the way. Hopefully we can carry everything initially. Alright, looking good. So let's just go collect from our machines just really quickly. So we've got 161 concrete in there, beautiful. And then we have this little portable miner just chilling. We'll just load it into this thing. All right, sweet. So yeah, just to nail that down, we did have these. Dis Can you actually dismantle these separately? Oh, I didn't know that. That's kind of cool. It's good to know for early game, I guess. If you wanted to just move them, we could have just moved them. I just built six new ones uh, where we needed them. All right, so I think once we have everything in our inventory, then we can start dismantling these things. So you don't want to dismantle it before we're ready, because then 
We have to make them all manually. Uh, yep, looks like we got everything. So let's just get rid of this stuff now. And you can actually just tap control to queue up what you want to delete, which is nice. It's a new feature, at least since I last played. All right. It's getting nice and quiet now as we dismantle our, all our work. I didn't actually check how much conveyor belt stuff we're going to need, but I'm sure we'll be okay with that. All right, good. So that's all disconnected. Let's make our other miner. We want it to be at the same angle. Is it at the same angle already? It should be. I think so. Kind of looks like it's not. Can I climb this really quickly and just check? No, I guess it is. All right, cool. And then we can start laying foundations here. So we have to move this hub. Nice and quiet. So the power is still online for our stuff up there, right? Because it just comes out of here. Goes straight up. So that's good. Oh, we've only just disconnected iron and uh, the concrete. Alright, so I think, yeah, it's time to climb up and start laying out these foundations. Now, I'll make the foundations kind of thick. Just good to be raised a little bit. This place is pretty level, but you never know. Might need to get out of the way of a rock or whatever, like we tried to in the last episode. So, I don't know, somewhere... Pretty close, but not too close. Just about there, to give a bit of a gap between the two. Is a good starting position. Then we can just climb up and work from up here. Now, I suppose to keep the iron, oh, sorry, the limestone going, let's just build a connection out this way. Sort of a temporary connection. And that way, we're just building up concrete in the background all the time. That was a mistake. There, so concrete's still working now, at least. That's good. No time wasted, really. Broadly speaking. So you can do something called zooping now, um, which I think if you press R, toggle mode to be zoop. So we could just go straight across like this. And this will be the beginning of our smelting facility. Arguably maybe a bit too large actually, but whatever. <laughs> all right, so we've laid all those foundations. Um, then what we need, and we don't have yet, we've got basic walls, but we don't have the wall where they actually come in on a belt, which is really, really nice. Uh, there's like a gap for the for the belt for them to come in. It's hard to explain. A hole in the wall, essentially. Uh, I'm just trying to think, do I need to angle any of these? I like them being all dead straight. Looks good to me. Yeah, I think it's fine. All right, let's just go with the foundations just over here as well. And that'll be the edge, and it'll come in that way. Cool. So we need six smelters then. And then we just have to figure out the transport to get into them. So every we need one belt for two smelters. That's basically how it's going to work. So, something like this, I guess. So we don't need it to be lined up, but it needs to face that way for sure. And we need to move it forward. It's maybe about there. And do they? how much space do they take up on an actual grid? They take a middling space, I guess. Constructors will flow off of this, actually, so... It won't just be a smelting facility. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Let's just um, organize it so it's about there. And then the next one in line, but the same distance. And is this number six? I think so. So there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whoops. I'll get rid of one of these. Um, so these two for that one, these two for that one, these two for that one. That's okay. All right, good. Nice. Arguably taking a bit too much space, I think, but it's all right, I think. So it should be fine. So let's climb down. Just have a look at this, and we can set up maybe the, the way we want to lay out the power. Now, later on, you can get really nice power that fits into the walls and looks really seamless and everything, but, uh, you know, quote-unquote, for now, we have to use the poles. All right, good. So, in between each of these, they're going to need um, splitters, yeah? So let's get our splitters up and running. Might be good to just build a bit of a foundation here so I can stand on that and build. Something like this. Okay, so, let's get splitting. 
So Splitter is going to have to... And we'll take this in from the left, right? So that comes in this way. Uh, about there, I think. Then it's going to need another Splitter. This one's going to go the opposite direction. Because it's coming in from here initially. Yeah. Actually, I just realized this one can change just slightly. I should really hotkey these because I keep having to open this. So this can be hotkeyed onto, uh, let's say, four. And that could be five. So splitter is five. Boom. Is that right? Yeah, like this. It's not right. Sorry. I'm <laughs> such an idiot. Okay. This one's coming this way. That's why it's, it needs to be turned around this way at least once. Yeah. All right, so that can feed both of those. That can feed both of those. So just to show what I'm doing, we'll just line this up this way. If you do two before, I think it makes it like a nice right angle. So that's good. This one could just go straight in. And then basically this will just come somewhere to here, roughly. Nice and straight. Uh, we could even just go there, I guess. Okay, cool. So the miner, when it's powered, will start flooding in here. It'll get split into that splitter, or um, smelter, and that one. Same has to happen over here, so we'll just do the opposite. Opposite direction. Smooth. And this one just goes straight in there. And similarly, so we'll need a, a gap of two at the very least. That's the annoying thing. It's gonna, like, we're gonna have to break our own grid. I mean, it could just feed in like that. Or we could just set it up so that this works um, a bit better. Yeah, because there'll probably be a hole in the wall somewhere eventually to do that. That's good enough. Now you could build this encapsulated in that area if you wanted to, I suppose. So you're going to hide the miners completely. But I'll leave them outdoors for now until we get more components to actually build our factories with. All right, and then the last one to do it with is this one. So we need another splitter just here. And it has to take it in from the opposite side. It's there. Great. All right. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. So there's our three miners split nicely into the, our several smelters. Now, where things will start to get much more complicated is feeding these smelters out into where they need to go, which is into various constructors and different things like that. So let's uh, just start laying some foundations for that and we can let them turn on in a second. So we'll have to zoop it all the way down that way. A move tool, I never really thought about it, but a move tool would be quite nice in this game if you could just move things. Like, if I could just move that there and the wires stayed on, that'd be quite nice. I'm sure they've thought of that. Must be harder than it seems. All right, so. Let's just set up power accordingly. So that'll be the power that leads out to there. So we can cut this one. And we'll just have powers. Yeah, just at the corner here as well. All right, so that's that area on the right. And then internally, if you want to call it that, this will be the internal power pole for all the smelters. Okay, cool. Now we hook up the smelters one by one. You can see they're getting power. They're turning on, but obviously they're not receiving anything just yet. Okay, and then for out here, um, I guess just to keep consistency, maybe I'll just give every miner its own power pole, just so I know. Roughly just right next to it, you know? Uh, 
That was a mistake. Whoops. Awesome. All right. They should all be operational now. This one's not. Oh, I didn't connect it. That's fine. All right, we can see the ore flooding in, and it should get split nice and evenly between these splitters, and then, or it's, I keep calling them splitters, smelters. And then we have to then basically decide, okay, well, we need to start making rods and all of that again. So just really quick, over here on the production side of things, we can check. See, eventually what I'd like this to be able to do is we'd have a fast belt that takes everything out. The problem is the belts are limited to carrying 60. Uh, tons per minute, right? Or 60 units per minute. So you can't put air all of this onto one be belt and just have one output and then feed it into another factory. Things would just get bunched up and not like not roll out onto the belts fast enough. So what we have to do is kind of divide up the machines amongst the smelters until later on when we get faster technologies that allow us to produce more or carry more on the belts, because we'll get that later. Um, so if I want to make plates, we can see that it takes 30 per minute. And the output of this is 30 per minute, as far as I know. 30 per minute. So we can have one constructor for each of these. These are all iron, by the way. Alrighty, we are smoking. Uh, but we're getting a bit close to that rock for my liking. But basically, so let's just get rid of this. We can do this from up high now. Let's get back on our, our tower. Alright, there we go. Looking good. Um, so yeah, so what we need to do now is make constructors for each of these. Not everything has to have a dedicated constructor right in front of it, but these ones do. Or I want them to. So that one will have one right there, but we need to turn it this way. So that's two lots of iron plates that are going to come from there. Now, I'm actually out of uh, reinforced plates myself, so we'll have to start crafting and making some new things so we can get new constructors in. But the goal is going to be to make... We want to be able to make um, screws, plates, reinforced plates as well. So all of that stuff should be able to happen in here. So just build that there. Always hook up the one to the left. That's just the way I do it. And connect those two there. And then this just needs to go all the way down. way did I do it? Yeah, I guess it's in a little bit. There we go. <laughs> Alright, mini delay on them there. Okay, so we're just gridded out of our minds, right, with everything here, and we have told us to make plates. Make some plates. Alright, so we're just gonna make plates at first with these two feed them directly into each other. That's every 30 per minute, and this is 30 per minute, so that is one to one. Ah, but interestingly, we actually get a, an excess of iron, so we'll have to change that in the future, but just, I think, for now, until we want to fix that, um, because I'll have to move another facility out here and take all the uh, refined goods and move them over there and start doing stuff with them. But this is all right for now until we get maybe the next tier. So now we're just making plates. Feels good, man. All right, so we have to get our crafting bench up and running, and then we can... Oh, yeah, my hub is gone. <laughs> or I keep calling it hub. It's called hub. Just build it over here for now. It's going to be kind of out of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about these things. Just have to interact with them to make them go away. So let's see how we're doing. So we need 300, uh, 300, and 100. But what I'm looking to do is just make some reinforced plates first. And we can make two of those just for one more constructor. Now to make those we need screws and we've got loads of iron plates. And just have four, I think that'll be enough. There we go. All right, so four of these, and then obviously we're gonna make these in a machine in the future. 
Alrighty, so the reason I need reinforced plates is to make more constructors. Um, and we just need a couple more to handle what's coming out of the smelters right now. So at the very least, we want to be doing what we had when I took this place apart, yeah? Oh, I'm missing cable as well. Uh-oh. I really need to make a crafting bench just over here. There we go. Alright, just get a, bit, a little bit of cable up and running. And something else I might do is just turn off some of the miners for a minute. I've got this, like, OCD thing. I don't know if other people have it or not. Where I have ore in my pockets. Just piling up. So to prevent wasting it. Like, you could just throw it somewhere and I think eventually it disappears. But to prevent wasting it, I turn off the miners. And I'll just load the machines properly until I'm empty. If you know what I mean. So, like, this has 22 in it. I'll just load that with 100 now. And they'll still, like, come out. So it's like, nothing's really stopping. But that way, I just feel like I didn't waste anything. I'm still using it. I'm, I'm interrupting my own time. But it's it's a crazy little OCD thing I have where I'm like, I don't want to destroy any resources. I want everything to, you know, do its thing. Also, we can check the efficiency, by the way, if you're ever wondering, with that 30 minute to 30 minute thing that, I, I mean, it's pretty obvious right there. But sometimes it gets a bit more complicated later on. If you want to know if your building's operational or not, just check its efficiency rating. And you can see, yeah, 100% is coming. It's, you know, it's, it's working as, as intended. You can always overclock these things later. So for right now, what's going to be happening here is we make... We consume 30 iron per minute, which is correct. And then we're making 20 plates per minute. Oh, actually, this is totally fine then, isn't it? I don't need to change this at all. We're making 20 plates. Yeah, that's totally fine. I got confused, I guess. So this doesn't need to change at all. I was looking at the pre, what was coming in before, thinking I was adding it up wrong. It is piling up, though. I don't know if that's correct or not, though. Maybe I am... Losing my mind. 30 per minute, and we're making 30 per minute. No, that's it's one to one. As long as it's one to one, it should be fine. I think it just builds up a little bit of excess over time. Um, okay, so anyways, what's next? What did I forget to do? <laughs> I've totally lost my train of thought now because I was working out how that was working. Um, I've actually completely forgotten. Well, anyway, we have the screws oh yeah, yeah yeah we wanted another constructor but i was making cable that was it sorry <laughs> there we go now it's yellow because it's clipping with the power but that's fine now these are going to be a little bit different i think so let's just feed that into here i know it's a bit dark can't really do anything about the day night cycle so that's feeding into here straight away I'm just going to load this with, um, so we want to make, what are we making in these two? Plates? Is it just plates? This needs to be rods. Okay. And this can be rods as well. I'll just give that the ore that we have, uh, or the ingots. I'll just hook these up. Alright. So sorry, I got a little confused there. Just to go, Let's just go over it really quickly again. So, very simply, we have three miners. We've got six smelters then refining that iron into iron ingots. And then we have four constructors. The constructors, two of them are making plates, two of them are making rods. Now, if we want to automate screws, we need to go from rods to screws. So we need, yet again, more constructors, which all the time is adding more power demands to the network. So we can check our power and just see how it's going. Yeah, it's totally fine. The capacity, if all the buildings were operational at the max capacity, it would be up on the blue line. But for some reason, a lot of them are stalled. I think that's because two of the miners are offline. I'm actually kind of surprised about that, though, generally. Is anything else stalled? It looks like stuff over there is stalled. Oh, no, it's flickering. Okay, that just means, yeah, it's just being held back by the rate of that. But that's okay. So let's just grab this. Loads of um, wire now, so we'll be fine for the next few milestones with that. All right, good. Um, so let's have a look. This is making it 15 per minute. So this is what I was thinking of before. So for instance, we could actually cut that here if we wanted to. And maybe just move this forward. Now, this is getting a bit too complicated for its own good almost with, re with the level of where we're at right now. But we'll just do this just to show the example. Um, and really, the constructors should be built forward, so we have the ability to always make a splitter if we ever need to. So something like this is usually a bit better. 
because we make 30, right? This takes in 15 for rods. So obviously we can split this and have two of them come out. So that goes into there. That goes into there. Okay, so that's fine. We'll build another constructor now. All right, and that'll feed into there. Now you might be thinking, oh no, you're kind of blocking where you're going. So what we'll probably do is I'll build this further out in a bit of time, and then we'll build a second floor and build an actual facility that kind of d you know deals with all this. But don't want to do it just yet. Um, we'll just kind of do things a bit more manually until then, like a little bit, uh, such as putting this here. Okay. And then, yeah, we really need to get the chainsaw to remove some of these things out of the way as well. Cause I can't get rid of this myself. That's why we need to move up a floor. But at the very least, what we can do here is just build one more constructor. Oh, I actually can't even fit it. Yeah, we'll just have to build it on the ground. And we need more cable. Goddamn. Okay. So this should be the last one we need for a bit. So these rods are going to go in there, and we'll just build, take this power, put it into there, and this will be screws. So basically this takes 10, sorry, 10 iron rods and turns them into screws. Uh, it is powered, we just have to wait for it to get its stuff. Is this chosen what it's doing? This is no power. Let's get the power. And there we go. So this one is making rods for us just to collect. Uh, And this one is making rods that will get changed into screws. 10 per minute, though. How much does this make per minute? 15 per minute. So we actually have extra screws even we could siphon off somewhere else if we wanted to, you know? Because uh, it takes a long time to press these, I guess, into rods. Or into screws, sorry. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so that's automated screws for us. Uh, in fact, because it's going to get built up anyway, I think I might just build another one of those. Because we need a lot of screws. I could just make it go a bit quicker. So give me those screws. 12. Boom. And then we'll start progressing the next milestone. And we can have a look at our map, go exploring, let the machines do their thing for a little while, and then come back to them. All right, good. So, constructor, we need cable. Eight cable. Really need to make a machine that just does that automatically as well, right? Now we can make plates. So we'll do two more constructors and that'll happen. Excuse me, that'll have to be it. Okay, good. So, another constructor here. In a totally not messy way. And this will just feed in through the plant into that. Okay, that's done. So, there we go. I mean, that's really messy, and I know down on the ground it can be kind of hard to see what I was doing, but we'll just hop up really quickly, and we'll build one more constructor out by where the wire is so we can take in and make some cable automatically. So basically, the, all the rods we're producing are going into two things that are refining them both into screws, um, but not all of them. So some of them will be saved up, and this was backed up for a while. That's why it's coming out faster. But at least that keeps us going for a bit, and that'll save up all the screws. We've got loads of iron plates. The iron plates are on the go, and the wire is on the go. So the next milestone is basically done. Um, but let's just build that other building out here. And then eventually we'll make a copper facility, just specifically for this. So I'm just going to pop it right here. Hook it up like that. And we'll say cable. We'll make a little box. And we'll just join the box into the machine. And then here, we'll build a splitter. Because I want some wire to stay raw, as it were. Unrefined. Okay, so I think that's basically it. So that's wire coming into here, splitting, going into a box, and then half of it goes into here, which gets turned into cable. And we can use that then to extend our power network.
the cable will be stored in this box then. All good. All right, let's just see what we've got in our inventory. I can just hit these miners again and drop some stuff in them. Get rid of the ore that's hanging around my inventory. 100 in there. 56 in there. Are these still working? They're still working just fine. Just constantly making concrete in the background, allowing us to build bigger factories. Most of the walls and flooring, even if those look metal, it is concrete that's required. All right, keep that building operational. Cool. Okay. So we needed 300 wire. We've got plenty of that. We needed 300 screws. We don't have that yet. And then we needed uh, 100 iron plates, which we also don't have yet. But there should be plenty in here now. 120 in there. 112 in there. So we've got that. Let's check on the screws now. Already, they get made pretty quickly. They get made in bulk. So 300 might seem like a lot, but it's not that bad. So we're already up to 228. So pretty good. Once we do that, we'll get our map and we can really explore. So we just kind of have to wait now. Maybe I'll just convert some of my own iron rods here into screws. And once we get about... We've got 250. Once we get about 280, uh, we can just get the rest from the machines. All right. 296. And there we go. All right. Two milestones done this episode. Technically, the other one was at the beginning, I guess. But you get me. Let me have a win. For God's sake. Alrighty. Boom, boom, boom. Hit the button. Milestone reached. The molecular analysis machine, referred to as the MAM, will allow R&D to provide new technologies, items, and buildings based on samples collected in the field. All right. To ensure a greater chance of success during exploration, an upgraded tool belt has been provided, as well as an object scanner and beacons. Note, the object scanner requires calibration via the MAM to enable detection of specific objects. All right, so let's have a look at all the new stuff we got. I just need to the make more reinforced plates. The map has been unlocked. There you go. So yeah, I just need to make a few more reinforced plates, so just bear with me. And then we can build that MAM. Have a look at the molecular anal analysis machine. I think four is enough. I think so, anyway. Alright, cool. So, special MAM. There we go. Now, back in the day, from what I remember, this used to be inside your hub. But now inside the hub is this like weird little mini game where you can basically play like a sort of a packing sort of Tetris game to do with like, it's actually a pretty fun little mini game to be honest, but I don't know why it's here. And also I don't know what else is, this place is ever going to be used for now, but they, this used to be, all your little machines used to be in here, but now they have this like entirely external dedicated research facility for it. So let's check out. So we've got alien organisms. So hog research. So we can start that it only takes three seconds costs one of the uh, hog hide that we had. Analysis complete. Bio-organic properties. Organic data capsule and biomass are the rewards. So we can get biomass from animals now. Oh yeah, that's actually really good. Um, hatcher research. Alien protein. I don't have that. Alien protein. This is all different, I think, from what I remember. Alien protein. I don't know how you get alien protein. Oh, that's the reward. Sorry. And we have to hand in these things. Sorry, my bad. Ground down alien remains in a neat little package. Used for medical purposes and to research alien organisms. Damn. And to do this, we need five protein and some biomass. I see. Okay, well, we don't have anything, any of these other animals yet. We've just got what we have. So let's check nutrients. We have some of this. Pale berries. And we're New on our way. Added to the object scanner. Nutritional processor. Okay. New research available in the MAM. Okay, and then I guess we need to find a bacon ar agaric, which we don't have yet. And what else is in here? Power slugs can be researched. We've got one of them, and we'll give us a power shard, or we can use it to get power shards, I guess.
Yeah, so every power slug we come across now can be used for recipe unlocked. power shards and overclocking. All right, so for overclocking, basically when you get a power shard, when you find a slug and you turn them into a shard, um, you can put that shard... I don't know if I'm saying this wrong now. Yeah, the over, is that what it's called? Overclock? Yeah, power shard. If you get the power shard, put it in a machine, then you can overclock the machine to do uh, to increase its rate of production at the cost of exponentially rising power. Although I think they said in this update that they're planning on changing how overclocking works. I don't think they've done it yet, but that's a, one of the things they plan on changing. All right, cool. So that was uh, quite a lot of little stuff there, little things. But we've got our little research on the go. Um, let's choose our next milestone. We can also look at the map now. So that's tier one complete. Done. Nailed it. Next up is part assembly, obstacle clearing, jump pads, resource sync pro, uh, bonus program, which is awesome. It's how, and it's so funny to say that, actually, because it's literally called the awesome shop. That gives us all the cosmetics we get to use in the game. And then logistics mark two, so we can carry twice the amount on the same belt. Um, but this is the one I want next, and it just needs screws, cable, and this. So yeah, let's do this. We're already making all of these things. And then we can just hack away at the ground around us and get solid biofuel and more inventory and all of that. So this will be my next milestone, obstacle clearing. So let's hand in what we've got. We have the concrete. We don't have the other things yet, but everything's still up and running. And we have to check on that power soon. Two hundred and four. We needed 500, so there's 204 in both. We're close already. And then we needed 100 cables. So let's just run off, get the cable. By the time we come back, we should have what we need. And then we can build ourselves a chainsaw. All right, cable. 100 cable is needed, so we're not making enough cable yet. Uh, I could just load this machine with wire just to make sure it never stops, because it's only operating at 27% capacity right now. So let's get those numbers up. I want to see lots of cable coming in. Oh man, and what's that? Looks like we've got a power slug right there, actually, if we zoom in. Is it a yellow one? There's all different colors, and i got to be honest, I couldn't tell you what they do. I know blue is for overclocking, but maybe the other ones do different things. I have no idea. Alrighty. We'll find out as we go, though. Alright, so the ore has dried up now, so we need to... Just turn these machines back on, see how the power network holds. I think it'll be okay. Alright, good. Everything's back up and running. Nice. I am loving this. <laughs> I hope people are enjoying it. I know it's kind of slow, very chill. Certainly the perfect game to have on while you're playing a different game yourself or listening to a podcast or watching this type of thing. Like if you're playing this and watching someone else play it, Good to get ideas and things like that, I think. I love it. Um, we I haven't built the space elevator yet. Don't need to go that far yet, but it is a huge building as well. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of just waiting. I want to clear the obstacles like out here, and then we can build a facility further out. And honestly, I might have to move all that power now. It's a bit too close to where the miners are. Maybe they'd have to go a bit further over there, which is kind of annoying. Uh, let's check how power is going, by the way. So this has stopped pushing grass out. That's empty now. This is full of stuff. How's this doing? That's fine. So basically what's going to happen is this biomass will get turned into biofuel. So what I could do is just literally move it all to that one and start the process again. If we can just get the next milestone done. And that would make our fuel efficiency way better. Um, so let's just see. Do we have the screws? I think I've got the screws now. We just need the cable. Um, I could try to just make some of that cable myself here instead of running back. So we've got... Oh yeah, we're making it super fast. That's good. So we just need 100, and then we can get our chainsaw. See what we need to get the chainsaw. I don't actually know now what flower petals do. It used to be that they color walls and stuff. You can paint everything to be whatever colors you want, want them to be, really. It's actually quite a powerful in-game cosmetic little editor, I think. Because uh, there's all these different swatches and things you can use to change the color sets. And it changes automatically if you're not happy with it. So you don't have to redo everything. It's really good. But it used to be that you fill a little paint gun with the flower paddles. And now I think you just... I don't know what you use them for. I think you just do it automatically now. Alright, obstacle clearing. Boom. Milestone reach. Biofuel will ensure maximum efficiency of biomass burners. To aid in biofuel production, you are now capable of removing foliage that consists primarily of wood. Additionally, R&D inflated your pocket dimension. 
R&D inflated my pocket dimension. All right, so in the equipment workshop, which we deleted before, if you remember, we can now get a chainsaw. Uh, we can... How do I add that to to-do list? I need to edit the to-do list, actually, and get rid of the foundations now. We don't need them there anymore. All right, cool. So just the chainsaw. So we need more screws, reinforced plates, and then we can get a chainsaw, and then we just load it with biofuel. But we can make biofuel now. So what I'll do is... I'll send this on a little bit of a merry-go-round, in a way. Let's just select recipe, switch this to solid biofuel. If I left room here, I could have just fed the belt in. I mean, I could do that. I mean, I I think that would irk a lot of people, but this would just make it kind of automatic. So going to leave it the way it is. But um, got to move these down on the bottom because the biofuel is going to come in on top. All right, so that goes in there. That comes out, goes in here. And that'll be biofuel that's going to start making. The most energy efficient form of solid biomass can be used as fuel for the chainsaw. Excellent. Great. And then we can also put it into the different burners. So they're on 14. They're actually getting quite low. But I'd rather load them now with biofuel if we could. So hopefully that'll just keep going to, to make that. Um, yeah, so I think the last thing I'd like to do is just get that chainsaw and then we could wrap it up for this one. Um, so it's a chainsaw. We just need reinforced plates and screws. So it's back over this way. And then in the next episode, we're going to push out the... I might actually move in between episodes, just move that over there. Because you've seen me build it already. And that wouldn't be a loss to viewers, I think, just seeing me literally move the power over that way. Uh, and that will give us room to expand this area out. Uh, yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. All right, so screws. Screws, and then we just make the reinforced plates. So we just need five of them, and then that's the chainsaw. All right, good. This new music it sounds really good. All right, the chainsaw's back, and our ship is coming in. We've got no fuel for it though at the moment. Alright, we are powered. So with this chainsaw, I'm just going to remove the tree that was over here. It's kind of blocking us a bit. They've also, also nerfed the noise of this, I think. It's not nearly as loud. Could be wrong about that, but it doesn't sound as loud as it did to me not that long ago. Uh, this is a barrel nut tree, but I might just get rid of it. It's fine. Our power is just shut down. It was inevitable. Just really quickly, we could just power that back on, leave us in a good spot for the next ep. Without power, we can't make power, so it's kind of a scary thing. So, 9, 8, 9, 9, 9. So, yeah, let's just load this up. Pop 9 in there. 8. 8. And we'll just add another one just to kind of even it all out. That should keep us going for a bit. As we load this up with biofuel. Love the look of it, man. It looks so good. So dense. Densely packed. It can handle... It needs 120 per minute to come in here, though. So we need the uh, second logistics belt if we want to feed it in properly. All right. Well, guys, that's going to have to be it for this episode. So today, we built all of that, right? We reorganized everything to have six smelters. Four of them are active. Four constructors then pumping stuff out into both rods and plates and then that's being refined into screws but in the next episode we're going to actually build a proper factory for this non-smelter area probably push it out here somewhere and have multiple floors to it so we're going to get more and more ambitious with each episode multiple floors carrying our belts up and down so we're actually making sure there's no spillover unless we want it to be all right so that's going to be it thank you guys very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support the channel directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. You'll also get exclusive access to my Discord, where there's dedicated channels for each series I'm doing, and it's a great place just to meet others and make some friends.